Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. Tonight, we were talking about secret societies and tiki. What are you talking about? Secret society? What are you talking about? Like Bohemian Grove stuff? Like conspiracy stuff? Mm, no, but you should look that up. It's super weird. It's like a burning owl. I'm talking about clubs that some tiki bars put together, not only to help keep the patronage of their establishment consistent, but also so that their clientele can feel part of something. You really create bar loyalty when you have members of a club belonging to your bar. Some examples of that kind of thing are like the Kill Devil Club, Forbidden Island in Alameda, California. You have to taste over 90 different premium rums, not at the same time, but over a certain amount of time. The club at the Tonga Hut is called the Loyal Order of the Drilling Bastard. It's really, it's a mouthful. It's like Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. You probably have to say it like 17 times in order to get it. But for that, you have to go through Beach Bumberry's whole grog log, and then you remember that club. And then once you are a member, then you get your name up on a little thing on the wall, and it's like a point of pride, you know? I'd love to be a member of that club, but it's in North Hollywood and I'm in Costa Mesa, so that's like an, almost an hour away. There's almost no way for me to accomplish that. Unless I spend like two weeks and just go on a bend, like a wild bender. Maybe. I could write it off. The guy who was instrumental in really bringing back the whole loyalty program was probably Martin Kate. And Martin Kate, of course, you know, owns Smuggler's Co., but he was also a co-founder of Forbidden Island in Alameda. So the development of the Kill Devil Club probably had a lot of his own hands on that. but. When he opened Smuggler's Cove, he decided that he was gonna do a whole different thing. Now, if you go through the whole Smuggler's Cove menu, you become a Voyager of the Cove. But he even has a more elevated thing where it's a whole educational process because as you may or may not know, Martin Kate is just a genius about rums. Like he is fanatical about knowing everything about every rum and the distilling process and everything like that. So he has this big long education program that he put together where you go through the history and style of different rums, tasting them along the way. And once you become like the grand poobah of that, you are a member of the Rumbustion Society. So these are all examples of modern day tiki bars doing something that I thought just kind of came out of their own modern genius. Wrong again, friends, wrong again. I was doing some research and our favorite tiki bar, or at least my favorite tiki bar, the Mai Kai, had something in the 1960s called the Kole Maluna Society. To become a member of the Kole Maluna Society, you would have to go through the 46 drinks that were on the menu at the time. And the way that I learned about this whole thing was kind of twofold. If you don't have the Mai Kai book by Tim Swanky Glasner, you are missing out on the whole history of the greatest tiki bar of all time. Tiki bar, tiki restaurant, tiki palace, whatever you wanna call it, tiki gardens. Yeah, insane. Great book, but it details the whole thing. Also in Beach Bum Berry's book, Sip and Safari, he really tells the whole story of Mariana Liquidini, the head bartender at the Mai Kai, and the story of the Okole Maluna Society. So here's the menu. The menu looked like this at the Mai Kai at the time, except it was all filled in with color. They had like an outlined version. Once you drank the drink, you mark in that you drank the drink. And then you would get a bamboo mug, like in this display case by the surfboard bar. And the first one to accomplish the feat would get a black velvet painting of yourself hung amongst all the mugs. A black velvet painting of yourself? I keep thinking that I've heard all this rad stuff about tiki bars, like all this mind-blowing stuff about these innovative bartenders and bar owners and, and these different things they've done, and then you hear about them having black velvet paintings done of their patrons. <laughs> like, how cool is that? That's the best. You would also get an Akoli Maluna membership card. And of course, Akoli Maluna is really translated loosely to bottoms up. Somebody in the comments will go, dude, that's not what it means these days. These days is different than th those days. These days it has a uh, kind of a pejorative slang meaning, but back here it meant bottoms up. Like, come on, man, let's have a drink. And once again, buy Tim's book. Dude, this thing's so good. I found this really interesting. On the back of the card, it says, claiming its fame from days of piracy and bold adventures on the high seas. Rum embodies the very essence of romance. From the four corners of the world, Mai Kai has garnered 52 different rums. It's a lot of rums. Light and dark, obscure and renowned, robust and delicate, these fine rums are blended with tropical fruit juices and nectars resulting in 48 Mai Kai rum creations. A fucking motorcycle. Go on. Somebody in the comments was like, can you show that part of the bar? Because we don't understand why there's so much, there's always so much noise going on over here. So uh, here you go, here's the shot of that part of the bar. It's a little messy right now, but you're not supposed to be seeing that part. So, so there's your bonus view of the inside of the breezeway. Let me continue here. From the four corners of the world, 
Mai Kai has garnered 52 different rums, light and dark, obscure and renowned, robust and delicate. These fine rums are blended with tropical fruit juices and nectars, resulting in 48 Mai Kai rum creations. Having experienced the Mai Kai's full range of selection, representing rum in all delightful and subtle forms, this card bearer is to be recognized as a connoisseur of fine taste. I want to thank Tim Swanky Glasner for putting this book out. It is so invaluable. It's such an insight into just one of the greatest tiki bars of all time. Go pick this up. It's great for Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or whatever you do. So I found out about this whole story, right? And the reason that I mentioned any of this is because there was a cocktail that you would be awarded with if you became a member of the Kola Maluna Society. Oh, you know what else? I wrote a song called the Kola Maluna. And so it's so appropriate that we are doing a cocktail for the Akoli Maluna Society. This cocktail was called the Big Bamboo. I found the recipe for it on the, the Atomic Grog blog, your source for such a cohesive list of Mai Kai cocktails. I believe the recipe was actually found by Beach Bum Berry years ago. So thank you for your hard work, Jeff. And so to make the Big Bamboo, we will be using oranges, limes, white grapefruit, passion fruit syrup, Angostura bitters, Cuban or Virgin Islands rum. They also suggest Bacardi 8 which is like a gold Puerto Rican rum. Now they also specify a dark Jamaican rum. Now if you want to be really specific about it, Hurricane Hayward has gone through and tasted all kinds of rums against his Kohala Bay that he has. And Kohala Bay is the dark Jamaican rum they used to use at the Mai Kai. The mix that he came up with to formulate the Kohala Bay flavor profile is one part El Dorado 12 and one part Smith & Cross. This cocktail only takes half an ounce of dark Jamaican rum but we're gonna be mixing these two in order to create that. And in fact, Hurricane Hayward even has bottles that he makes at home where he, he'll buy both of these, measure them out, and then funnel them into one bottle. And he calls it his Mai Kai blend. Pretty smart stuff. All right, let's get to the cocktail. As always, we're gonna start out with the lime juice and uh, let's see, we can do it right here. So we are looking for half an ounce of lime juice. ounce of orange juice. So you're already starting to see that we are doing the holy trinity of Mai Kai juices. And that's lime, orange, and white grapefruit. And the third fruit in the holy trinity of Mai Kai fruit juices is the white grapefruit. And again, we only need a half an ounce. Which is such a shame when you have such a big, beautiful white grapefruit. I'll probably make two of these though. We'll see. All right, passion fruit syrup. How about that? And this is a simple one too, just another half an ounce. Lovely. Then, two shakes of the bitters machine here. Machine? And now the rum. So we need one ounce of the Bacardi 8. God, that smells good. It's funny because Bacardi has such a bad name, but the Bacardi 8 is like the good one. So don't go and buy all the other Bacardis, but this is like, yeah. Now we're gonna do the Kohala Bay blend here. And that means Half of it's gonna be this, and half of it's gonna be Smith & Cross. Now we only need half an ounce, so it's kind of ridiculous because we're only gonna be doing quarter ounce of each. Okay, there's my quarter ounce there. And I could just mix them together, but as we know, it's better for you to pour the measurement in here, dump it into the cocktail, and then start again, because what if I bumped myself and I somehow knocked two ounces of this in there? Then it kind of ruins the whole thing. And then we'd just be drinking two and a quarter ounces of whatever weird mix that is. I mean. Okay, so here's the other quarter ounce. Almost missed the cork on that one. So there's the cocktail. Oh, it already smells like a Mai Kai cocktail. I'm so excited about this. Now the recipe calls for precisely four ounces of ice. So we are going to grab some pebble ice out of the uh, bucket over here. Two ounces there. Come on. Come on. Okay, four ounces of ice. 
There we go. And then a very quick flash blend over here on the vintage Hamilton Beach mixer. Okay, about six seconds there. Now a buddy of ours on Instagram, Nick Morton, made this for us like a year ago or something. And I was like, what am I gonna do with this bamboo? It's almost kind of like a vase, but it's like, it's totally a mug. So I was like, oh, the big bamboo. So we will pour this right down into here. Add some ice to fill. The reason why you wanna be specific about the amount of ice that you put into it is because you don't wanna over dilute the cocktail. Once it's flash blended, then you can add more ice. And then what we are gonna do is add a little bit of mint, just a quick little whack to wake up the uh, oils. Okay, very nice. And then from our friends at Surfside Sips, we'll be using a bamboo straw. It's glass, you know, but bamboo straw for the big bamboo cocktail. So we will put that in the back here. Some double bamboo action. Okay. And we have a Mai Kai swizzle too. So we will put this in here in memory of Mariana Liquidini and all of the members of the Ecole Maluna Society. And so from the Ecole Maluna Society in the 1960s at the Mai Kai by the incredible Mariana Liquidini, this is the big bamboo. All right, let's try it. I'm so excited, man. Oh man, it's tangy. It's very tangy right up front, but it definitely tastes like a Mai Kai cocktail. Immediately when you get that flavor, you go, oh man, I'm home. This is everything that you want in an exotic cocktail. It's tangy, you can taste the rums, but the rums are delicious. Passion fruit, you can, you can feel it smoothing things out a bit. And of course you get that mint right up in your nose when you take a sip. And that was the whole intention of the mint, was to add that whole sensory thing. Not only are you tasting the rum, the fruit juices and the syrups, but you're smelling the mint. It's just perfect. And I, God, I can't wait to go back to the Mai Kai. I really can't. Because they make these cocktails just like they used to there. At least there's very little discernible difference in my opinion. I'm sure if you talk to somebody like Hurricane Hayward, he'd be like, yeah, dude, it's changed. But still good, but it's changed. I just go, it's the perfect tiki experience. Yeah, the perfect tiki experience. It's the Mai Kai. Oh God, that's a great drink. It's very sour. It's vi It's got a lot of like acidity to it. I don't know how many of these you could drink, but uh, it's good. It's really good. But I've always said that this is like the closest way for you to time travel through Tiki and experience what they experienced in the 1960s at the Mai Kai. Now I gotta get somebody to paint a black velvet painting of me. McBiff? Ooh. It's um, you definitely taste the rums there. But the rums and the fruit juices are balanced so well. You know, when I was coming up with the Breezeway cocktail, the Breezeway cocktail hour cocktail, I wanted it to have a flavor profile that of something that Mariana Liquidini would have done. And that's why I started with the Holy Trinity of Mai Kai fruit juices. The orange juice, the lime juice, and the white grapefruit juice. And as you see in this cocktail, he did the exact same thing. He did his three main juices that he liked so much, kept them to a half an ounce each, added in some passion fruit also at a half an ounce, and then the rum is an ounce and a half, and then some bitters. It's a really simple cocktail. It, I learned a lot by looking at his recipes because while they were very well balanced and very delicate, there was also simplicity to a lot of them. What do you guys think about the bamboo straw in the bamboo mug? Is that too much bamboo? Nah, no way. If you do like this straw, you can get it from Surfside Sips. There's a link in the description below, and if you use the coupon code BREEZEWAY, you help to support the channel. Get one of these things, dude, they're rad. They're super great. And they're more they're more decorative, more interesting than just like a plastic straw. Mm. That's it? Man. I'm definitely gonna be making another one of these. Another way to help support the Breezeway Cocktail Hour is to join the $10 tier of our Patreon, like the, the VIP section of the Breezeway. 
you will get this little enamel pin, custom breezeway enamel pin, and then you'll be first in line to buy things like glassware, tiki mugs, t-shirts, anything that we might create and put out to the masses because it has a tendency to sell out quickly. So, the Patreon. Well, I'm gonna make another one of these things. So, thank you for joining me once again on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. If you did enjoy this episode, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and I will see you in the next cocktail episode. Aloha. All right, let's make another one. Loyal order of the drooling, loyal order of the drooling, loyal order of the drooling bla blastered, blastered, so blastered. So the Kill Devil Club might have been part of his his uh, brain trust. Who says that? Now, if you go through the whole Smuggler's Cove menu, you become a Voyager of the Cove, called the Macaulay Maluna Society. Yeah, dude, the Maca the Macaulay Culkin Society, the Macaulay Maluna Society. So I found out about. So I found out about. And the cocktail was presented to you if you became a member. If you drank all 48 drinks, 48, 43, four. If you drank all 43 drinks, if you drank all 46 drinks, Hurricane Hayward has gone through. This is like motorcycles just doing laps now. Beat it. Aloha, welcome. Aloha, welcome. What is that? You know how to do this. What is this guy? Okay, get that out of the way. It's always something. It's always one of these things. Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Spike's. What am I doing with my hands? Yeah, I poured so much of that drink right here. I'm for sure gonna make another one of those. I wanted to have, I wanted to, I wanted to, it to, if you did enjoy this episode, Secret Society. What do you think about that secret society idea? Are any of you guys in one of those clubs? If you are, mention it in the comments below and uh, let me know which club you have, you've conquered all the cocktails or all the rums or, because I'm sure there are a lot of you out there. There's more to that story in uh, Surf and Safari and I would urge you to buy that book to read the rest of the story. The owners of the Mai Kai were like, ooh, maybe we should stop this because guys were rushing to get through all 46 cocktails and they were getting like wasted like drinking, I don't know, like 10 cocktails in a, in a night or something like that. And then they'd have to like gently pour them into a, a taxi cab. And they're like, uh, yeah, I think we, we might've killed some people with this thing. So they don't do it anymore, but maybe there's like another way to do it. Maybe they can bring it back. Maybe they can do it safely somehow. I don't know. It's, you know, it's to your own discretion. Like you, you should know how much you drink. Like you don't want to kill yourself. Maybe there's a way to do the, uh, the black velvet painting without having it like the first one, so it's not a race to finish it. Yeah, I don't know. It's a pretty cool award. I'm talking about the hot tub just went on. Can you hear that?
Fresh off the ship, to heat it, drop me a straw. Baby, I'm drowning in rum. 